I'm Coach D, and this is Boxing Basics. Today's lesson is going to focus on the boxing stance. This is arguably the most important aspect to your overall foundation of boxing, and for many people, it's the source of where they're having the most problems. Many people brand new to boxing don't understand the importance of having the right boxing stance. Your boxing stance is a very foundation of everything that you're going to do, whether it's punching, whether it's slipping, whether it's moving. Without the right balance or the right weight distribution, you're going to run into many problems as you try to advance at this sport. First step to understanding your boxing stance is to first figure out which boxing stance benefits you or which one works for you. I'm a right-handed fighter, which means that for me, it's going to be more beneficial having my left shoulder forward with my power hand trailing, my right hand trailing. My feet are going to be shoulder width apart, my knees slightly bent, both my feet are going to be aimed in more of a 45 degree angle, and I'm not going to have my back foot far behind me or too far out, otherwise I'm squared up. What I want to do is have that angle with a little bit forward, but I'm here, balanced. And again, one thing I want to definitely reiterate is having your weight evenly balanced on both feet. Also, I'm not going to be flat on my heels. I'm going to be slightly raised on my toes, not so much on my toes actually, but on the balls of my feet. Also, my hand position is very important. As you're starting out, the worst thing to do is to try to mimic what you see on TV, such as a pro like Floyd Mayweather, who's been boxing since he was a very, very small child, fighting like this or hands low. As you're learning, you want to start out basically with your hands up. Hands up, elbows in, tucked in, chin down, looking through your guard. And was something that we call looking through your eyebrows, all right? Chin down. This is your basic conventional boxing stance. On the other hand, if my left hand is my power hand, this whole thing is going to be flipped around, whereas I'm going to be in what's called southpaw boxing stance, which is basically the same thing mirrored on the other side, except my left hand is trailing and my right hand is leading. Feet still shoulder width apart, feet aimed at a 45 degree angle, and again, hands still up, chin down, everything is the same except it's just the mirror of what I'm doing on the other side. As we stand in our conventional boxing stance, there's a couple of things you want to look for. Number one, we don't want our feet to be angled straight to the side. This makes it hard for us to move. Other thing we don't want is we don't want our back foot to be behind us. This makes it hard as your opponent moves to throw your right hand because you're having to reach far across your body. You want your feet angled a little bit at a 45 degree angle. Not straight forward, not straight to the side, but at a 45 degree angle. All right. You want your back foot not to be behind you, but a little bit, a little bit up, a little bit up. And other thing you want is to make sure that your weight is evenly distributed on both legs. Also, you don't want to be flat-footed or on your heels. What you do want is to be not high on your toes, but on the balls of your feet. This makes it a little easier for movement, okay? These are the things you want to focus on when focusing on the position of your feet. There's a simple rule to follow that's going to help you a long ways. As you're starting out, keep one thing in mind. Whatever direction you move, that foot has to go first. If I'm going forward, I step first with my front foot followed by my back. If I'm going backwards, it's the other way around. I step first with my back foot followed by my front. And also, as I'm going, if I'm going to my left, I step with my left foot first followed by my right. And if I'm going to my right, I step to my right foot first followed by my left. This makes it easy as I move. It's an easy way to remember your movement so that if I have to move forward, if I move backwards, if I move to my left, if I move to my right, each time I go, I'm in position to punch. This is one of the most important aspects that often gets overlooked when it comes to your boxing movement. Another key aspect when it comes to your boxing stance is what we call chattering. What chattering is, is movement. In other words, the worst thing I can do in my boxing stance is just to stay stuck like this the whole time. Because you got to keep in mind, this is a boxing match. Your opponent's going to be moving. And if I'm just moving stiffly, it's going to make it easier for my opponent to punch me. 
All right, if I'm just moving stiff, I'm too robotic, and I can't really get much done. So what you want to do is you want to incorporate what we call chatter, which is some basic movement, never standing still. What chatter is, is I'm staying in my boxing stance. I'm not moving from my boxing stance, but I have some movement going, some head movement, all right? This keeps me in position and keeps my body in motion so that just in case a punch comes, my body's already in motion to slip it or to parry it, to buy my weave a punch, or if I find that opening, to deliver that punch myself. But you want to keep some chatter going. Easy way to work on this is while you're in your boxing stance and you're in the mirror, just add a little movement. Still keeping your boxing stance together, but just some slight movement, never staying in the same place. All right? Adding sometimes a pivot, all right? Throwing some punches, coming back to your first position, and just continue to just exercise this. This is going to help your overall boxing by leaps and bounds.